build your business in a way to it don't matter what happens with the economy or what happens with anything, whether you move to the other side of the city, and that's what you guys want, right? Session proof, and shop proof, uh, moving location proof business instead of saying, well, uh, is my clients gonna follow me or is there walk-ins? After you go through that uh, stage as a new barber, who wants to deal with that again? You want to deal with like your walk-ins, the, the lucky stars and leprechauns send me some walk-ins today. <laughs> like, What's up, y'all? I'm Chuka the Barber. I'm here with another episode of the Rich Barber TV. Okay, thanks for tuning in, man. Today, I'm going to talk about how to build a bulletproof business. Bow. Now, the other day, I spoke at Mixed Beauty Institute in Sacramento, California. That's my hometown. Okay, so pay attention to the answers to the questions that the students had because they had really good questions. All right, so let's get into it. Mm. So how did you know from the beginning how to set your prices and when to raise your prices? Create a demand for yourself, and we'll talk about ways you can do that, but when you got this demand and overflow and, and you can see, like, man, I got a demand, I got overflow, or like, man, and, you know, Time to raise my prices and they'll stay. I don't raise my prices plenty of times and they don't go nowhere. The thing is that, look, you're one human being, you got two hands and one head, you can only do so much in one day. You got so much willpower and energy. So, um, once that flow, once you feel that overflow coming and that demand for you that you really, it's tough for you to really handle, you can raise your prices, lose some customers, still make the same amount of money, work less, or make more money, work less, or make the work the same amount and make more money. Like you can play with that, you know. And um, it, it goes again, like you right. Some people get mad, but then it comes again, like you're at this, you're this new level, and everybody's not your customer. <laughs> it, it could be kind of painful at times because it's like you got people you've been cutting for years, and it might not work for them and that's your own judgment if you want to work something out with them but at the same time like um you want to stay enjoying what you do this is why we do this because we enjoy doing it and if you let them run your business and determine your value then you won't you won't enjoy it like you used to the picky your client is the better for you because if you can take care of a picky client he ain't going nowhere you raise your prices to he ain't going nowhere because his picky ass going to go over there and get toe up and be right back in your chair because they not going to know his head. He not going to look the same. I say it all the time. You're selling a feeling. You're selling a feeling. If they got a certain feeling when they get out your chair about themselves and their haircut and they go sit somewhere else and they don't get that same feeling, they right back in your chair. If they care anything about their appearance and how they feel about themselves, they're going to be right back in your chair. That's all you're selling is a feeling. And the whole experience could be a certain feeling from when he comes in the door to where I welcome him, how I talk to him, how we conversate. You, when you build your clientele, make it in a way to where it's like you can't be replaced. Like you can't be replaced. And you do that, you'll be straight and then, then you can focus on other things. But if you're caught in this game of like getting clients, losing them, not having enough, you know what I mean? Then you're stuck in this game and you can't really think and, and focus on bigger, the bigger picture of things. Like the more you can get this over with, master it, then you can say, man, what else I want to do? Where else I want to take my career? Do I want to teach? Do I want to? Do I want to do another side business, doing something else in another industry to bring some more income in or whatever, you know? But it leaves options, so you want to master things as soon as possible. Um, there, I did at first, and you, and that might be a good idea at first. Or like different prices for how long it takes. What they're demanding because you want to set boundaries because people will take advantage comes and just like i just want to line up he sits in the chair and says and taper the sides in the back right. he's and he's trying to get away with just paying a lineup we all get that like so boundaries set those boundaries from the get-go like this is what i charge for this you add this on if i want to charge this is what i charge for that and that, and let them see it and they know like this is my boundaries this is what i charge even to eliminate that you can say you know lineups and then lineups with tapers you can have a price for that if they don't want nothing off the top. But just set all those things up in boundaries. That way you sometimes don't even gotta explain yourself. Like if I if I got a new person that I share my contact information with where I take my appointments online, like he goes on there and he just sees what I charge. It's just one price. It's, then he can decide. I ain't gotta say nothing else. I ain't gotta try to sell them on my service or sell them to come see me. Like there's a way, you know, yeah, here's my contact information. He sees I don't wanna pay $40 for a haircut. He don't have no lineup on there, no nothing else. That's it, and um, set that boundary for what works for me. <laughs> How do you deal with people saying that um, he's brand new? Now he acting brand new on me, or he act like he all that? I remember when he was just now he's trying to charge forty dollars. 
<laughs> you go and get if, if you want to grow, you're gonna get that period. You accept it and you embrace it. And when they say I change it when I'm Hollywood, I'll be like, yeah, I probably did. Like, <laughs> you know, so if you want above average success, the reason they say you changed and got Hollywood is because, um, not that you went to Hollywood and became a, you know, it's the fact that you did change. You gotta change. And if you don't change and adapt, in life and especially in this industry then you you die off like or you don't you get stagnant in your environment and then next thing you know you you ain't grew and you ain't did nothing stayed in the same spot if you don't grow you're not you don't change you're not growing and uh if the change if you know truly in your heart what you're doing and with the effort you're putting in and the time and the positive things that you're doing then you know that the change is positive and it's just you know their perspective Communication is key. Ask questions. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Pay attention to the uh, terminology and know that people use different terminologies than you do. There's no right or wrong to it. It's just trying to figure it out. Even with guard numbers, like I call that guard the one eight. I call it a number two, and it's put on there number one. They call it one sixteenth a zero. Yeah. And there's a whole bunch of confusion that could go on with like these numbers and stuff. You know, like start high and say is that the length you want it? Like or should I go lower? Like questions is everything. And then once I cut him one time and he gets the same cut, I know what he wants. But a, a new one, you always want to ask a bunch of questions. Like if somebody comes in and say, yeah, let me get a one on the side and three on top. Like what yeah. does that mean? Yeah, All yeah. the guards are different. Yeah.